What's up, Brooklyn? How you doing? Okay, imagine having no toilet paper, no toothbrush, no shampoo, one pair of underwear for 39 days. I did that. Now, add on top of that, imagine going to a random island with 17 other strangers and you're playing for a million dollars. Sound familiar? The game Survivor. So three years ago, I appeared on the 24th season of Survivor in Samoa. And what I didn't know going into the game is how much of an underdog I was for the game. I had no idea how the cards were stacked against me. And little did I know that the concept of underdog would later on become the concept of my company. So what is it that I do? I run a multimedia production company called Coup Productions. And pretty much I'm a global storyteller, mainly for the underdogs of the world. And I am blessed to get paid to do it. And whether or not it's a Fortune 500 company or a small nonprofit, I tell people stories that you don't readily see in mainstream media. So, sorry. Oh, this is going really fast. Okay, what's, what inspires me? You see two pictures up here and then a logo. I'm gonna take you back a little bit. The logo, Court Television Network. I graduated from UNC Chapel Hill, Matar Hill. And um, so immediately after college, I worked for these ridiculous, random, crazy talk shows. It was really, really crazy. But I wanted to scale it back and say, you know, I wanna do something serious. I, I want people to look at my resume and actually say, okay, she has a real job. So I started working for Court TV Network. So every day for six years, I would cover everything from homicides, molestations, rapes, you name it, kidnappings. It was very intense, very, very intense. But oftentimes in the courtroom, sitting in the defendant's chair would be people that looked like me, black and brown people. And oftentimes the talking heads that would be analyzing the cases would not look anything like them. And after about six and a half years, it just, really be, took a toll on my spirit and I dropped it and became a New York City public school teacher. Had to be absolutely <laughs> insane to do that. So here I am now, I'm, I'm a black girl from down south from the suburbs. And fast forward, now I'm a teacher teaching kids that look like me, black and brown kids. However, their narrative was very if it was left up to mainstream media. Maybe you thought they were dropouts, perhaps, comes from a single parent home, and, and their narrative was already told for them. However, when I started to really know these kids, they were completely different than what the world thought of them. And yet, they didn't have an outlet to tell it. And then it made me think about the defendants that I used to cover in television. And what was their narrative before they became a criminal or criminalized? And were they once my students that never had an outlet? So it really inspired me to really tell the stories and that as a storyteller, I owe it to the broader audience to have multi-dimensional stories aside from what mainstream media will tell you because media is a beast. Okay, my challenges. Um, you know, I've worked in TV for a long time. TV is pretty quick. You come up with an idea, you get a couple of people together, boom, you can execute it. You have a finished product, you can shop it to a network, you can, ha you can have it on a web series. It's pretty quick from A to B, it can be very quick. My challenge now is that I'm moving into the film world. And film is really, really a different beast. Oftentimes, there are more hands in the pot. Uh, you're dealing with a bigger budget, which, is, which means a lot more um, politics are involved. And I am blessed to have a film partner. And uh, we are doing our first feature film in Soweto, in Johannesburg. And um, now you're dealing with the politics of international business. I pretty much you know, can work my way about around American um, logistics and, and business. But now you're dealing on an international level. What is the lay of the land in South Africa? And how do they view two women filmmakers going over there? and that this is not just our hobby. This is what we do. So I'm currently in that challenge right now, but I'm very, very excited about it um, with Google and Microsoft. Really, really excited to back the project, and I, I am 
I'm over the moon about it. But it is going to be a long process. It's not going to be something that happens overnight. And so that's my internal struggle. So my dream, um, I have a lot of dreams. but And I dream really big, really uh, extreme. And I have infinite faith that these things will happen. But my long, long-term goal is to start a teen travel society. In a nutshell, I will take 10 to 15 students from disadvantaged areas. We will travel two to three continents for one year. And they will learn the customs and the languages and, and the religions of wherever the area that we're in. But also along with that, so that's the education part. We're gonna have an adventure side, which presents the survivor side. And they will be doing different, uh, whatever it is that we, we have planned out for them to get some physical activity in, to get some risk taking in. And then last but not least, every child will have a camera with them. So I'm trying to get Canon and, and Kodak to sponsor it. Um, and they will be able to tell whatever it is their story is on their adventure, bring it home, edit it, and show the people in their community. Because I truly believe education looks different to different people. And when you travel and when you're immersed in wherever you are, that's when you truly learn and that's, when you, that's what you take with you. All right. And so this picture, I just happened to use it. Uh, this, this is a young man um, who we recreated this shot. Uh, this was like a young Denzel from Washington from the movie Glory. And we shot this in my backyard, right in a little tiny corner. And um, the kid was absolutely amazing. And it was a series that ended up on Entertainment Tonight, where we took little kids and we um, recreated them into icons. And, and so he was our little Denzel Washington. So my question I want to leave with you tonight is this. Now, whether or not it's a comedy or a trilogy or a suspense movie, uh, you name it. If someone made a movie about your life so far, up to this point, would you pay to see it? If the answer is no, you need to get to work. Make it interesting. Thank you, guys.